With the diverse backgrounds of each of the band instruments comes an equally diverse array of intonation tendencies inherent to their design. This will be a part one of what I call the trio of intonation. Welcome to the Music Advice Podcast, and my name is Colin Galitz. I'm a music educator, and I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you to hopefully make your band experience easier today. We're discussing intonation in this three-part series, precisely what I call the trio of intonation. These three aspects of intonation are linked together. They are tone, balance, and blend. And today we're gonna cover the tone aspect of this trio and some of the things that you can do as a music educator to improve your ensemble or your music student's tone. And when I discuss ensemble tone, I ask students um, what the musical instrument was designed to do. It was designed to mimic the human voice and we need an open sound that imitates the act of singing from the band ensemble. Next, I ask them, what does embouchure mean? And they point to their mouth and I say, yes, that's half of it. The tongue is also part of the embouchure, specifically how we carry it inside of our mouth when we play. For brass instruments, the tongue's posture inside the mouth determines the airspeed and the pitch. Brass instruments have a variable articulation. They should articulate DA to produce low notes, DO for the middle register, and D for the higher notes. Each partial in the overtone series should have a different syllable associated with the articulation. Reeds carry a specific tongue posture as well. Clarinets are more D oriented, saxophones are more do oriented. The amount of reed vibrating also has a lot to do with the instrument's tone. For reeds, lower sounds can be produced easier. However, a da articulation would be slightly less reed in the mouth and D articulations plus slightly more reed in the mouth would produce a more reliable higher register or higher tone. Harmonic tones using the same fingerings but overblowing the partials are a great way to produce a more vibrant woodwind sound. During ensemble warm-ups, long tones are a great time to practice metered vibrato. First quarter notes, then eighth notes, then triplets, then sixteenth notes. This diaphragm vibrato reinforces the airflow through the instrument and darkens the ensemble tone over time. We are careful to point out that only certain instruments produce vibrato while playing in the concert band. Instruments like clarinet and the horn do not use vibrato during concert band playing. What does this have to do with tuning? I stress to students that it is, that it is intonation. Tone is at the center of good tuning. I go so far as to say, if a, if a note or a chord sounds good, then it's in tune. This is a student-centered teaching style, and it is their responsibility to determine whether or not an ensemble sounds good at any given moment, or is playing with a vibrant tone. This puts more of the cognitive load on the students and encourages them to listen to the sounds that they are making. Hopefully these tips and tricks will help you in your band room and on stage. And thank you for listening to the Music Advice Podcast. Please like and subscribe.